when when you start to rewire your brain to have a, a grateful attitude towards things, it's wild the difference between that and then the the flip side of that is you get caught up in the hum of things, you have a lot of responsibility and you start to convince yourself that like how stressful things are, how how crazy and hectic. When you can step into the the the, the opposite side, which is exactly what you're doing, the, the gratitude for the small things, you it's like you have little markers throughout your day then that you can hang your hat on of like it brings you back to reality. Do you know what I mean? Instead of getting caught up in that stressful state, even even as simple as like you said, your daughter or having food, having food and water to drink. Every time you eat, then you're thinking like, damn, there's a lot of people that don't have this. And but it, like I said, that can sound a little cliche, um, but it really makes an effect. And you get to the end of the day and you realize like, damn, I'm not getting caught in my head like I used to. You're listening to the Born Primitive Podcast. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Born Primitive Podcast. Morning, Tone. Morning, Bear. Get it in this morning. I got it in. It was a good one too. It was. It had a little Friday pump in it, so that that felt that felt good to get the get the arms a little juiced up. Nice, dude. <laughs> I was on an airplane all day yesterday. Did so. you did Did you get to the gym this morning? Yeah, but yeah. I was just felt like the freaking Tin Man, so I just had to, <laughs> I had to get moving. Man. I feel better now. You but damn, do the extra long warm yeah, up. Middle seat. Me, me and two other big dudes just packed in there. It never, yeah. never fails. It really does never, <laughs> never fail. We fails. all looked at each other. We're like, are you freaking kidding me? Every, like, every guy here is 240 and above, <laughs> and we all are in the same row. Um, so, yeah, needless to say. Sweating on each we're other. We're back. We're yeah. good. Uh, so, hey, today, um, everybody, we want to get into um, just me and Tony are going to riff here on, on just daily habits um, that you can implement that might help you out. Uh, you know, preface this that. We are by no means experts. I don't think Tony and I are literally experts in anything we talk about <laughs> in here. So I'll just caveat that for, you know, for here going forward. Um, but, you know, over the years, we've both picked up things from uh, mentors and subject matter experts in different fields. And, you know, as former athletes, um, you know, kind of performance is always top of mind. So we hope that some of these um, will be valuable to you. Um, you know, a lot of them are not earth shattering. They're really simple tactics that I think can just improve your overall wellness. So we're just going to kind of bounce back and forth. No real formal format here and uh, and get into it. And uh, hopefully you guys get some value to this. So Tony, why don't you kick, which, give me your first one. What do you got? Yeah, I'm going to kick it off with one that I've been doing uh, year to date of this year. And, and I, I committed to doing it for a full year, which this one, this one might sting for you a little bit, but no caffeine. And then with that subbing, doing bone broth every single morning uh, that I make myself. So that one's a little dorky. And, and by no means am I somebody that thinks caffeine is this this thing that nobody should be taking. But I just realized like on some self-reflection of how it was affecting me over time, it was one of those things where I'm a, I'm a constant thinker. I'm always an- overanalyzing and analyzing everything, whether it's me and my family or even things here at work. And what I realized is my ca- the caffeine was kind of, it was pushing that over a, a, an edge that actually made it almost unproductive in the sense of like, yes, it was good for that short-term hit of energy, but then there was a, a subtle anxiety in the background of my mind that, that the more I started to analyze, I realized was stemming a lot from that caffeine consumption. So I committed to, um, I committed to doing all of 2024 with no caffeine. And well, I, I'll be honest, there no super groundbreaking things from it, but definitely exactly what I was talking about of having a, a steady mental state throughout the day without the ups and downs has been the biggest takeaway that the first two weeks, man, ripping headaches, like definitely. And I, and I probably consume, I probably before this was consuming 200 to 300 milligrams a day. So two cups of coffee, two to three cups of coffee. So nothing, nothing insane, but just notice that when I hit that, that noon, the 2 PM, even the 4 PM that I wasn't falling off like I had before. Uh, and then working out, it was really interesting to see too, that my workouts, although you don't have that edge when you, when you drink a 16 ounce coffee, that my conditioning stuff actually felt better. And I think that's because I wasn't jacking rate. up my, yeah. my, my, oh, my yeah. heart rate. So, yeah. so yeah, just a really interesting one. And I've played with it before. I've, I've done one month, three month, uh, and always kind of liked the effects and liked the mental state that I was in when not doing caffeine. But this, was, this, is, this will definitely be the longest testing period since I've been 17 years old. So sleep too. I wish my aura ring isn't working right now. It would have been cool to see that because I do notice, um, I do notice my sleep's a little better too. So yeah, yeah that, that's my first one that just, just interesting, um, to, to test and kind of see the, the subtle effects of. And what's the, what's the bone broth thing? So the bone broth is just, and I, how do you even do that? Can, can so you just, I go to a butcher shop, which is uh, okay. here in, it's literally a half mile away over in Hilltop. 
And so I buy 10 pounds of bones. I have a stock pot that's like two feet tall. Okay. You yep. just put you, so I have them chop the bones into three or three or four inch pieces. Okay. So you literally just take the bag, dump it in there, fill that whole stock pot up with water, turn on your thing. I put some apple cider vinegar in there and you can do it. You can put vegetables and stuff. I keep it simple. I just do literally the bones, water, and then apple cider vinegar. Cause that helps break down the, 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 the stuff in the bones. And then you let it simmer for 24 hours. So you just keep it on there simmering for 24 hours. You can cover it, which keeps the liquid level the same, or you can let it boil down, which makes it more condensed. Okay. Yeah, You're reducing it. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, once you hit 24 hours, just get cheesecloth. I have, I have 10, 10 to 15, uh, depending on each one's a little different, just mason jars. And you just pour it in through the cheesecloth into there and you're good to go. So you can, I can freeze. I'll, I'll usually keep three unthawed because they're like 32 ounce jars. And then I just do eight ounces in the morning. So it's similar okay. like the, the, like glutamine you yeah. as a supplement is really beneficial. High amounts of that in bone broth, as well as just a ton of other things. It has like a cup has about 12 grams of protein. So it's not like you're not doing it for just the protein, but just a ton of collagen, ton of glutamine, ton of good stuff for your gut. So first thing in the morning, whereas I used to do, I would always do water, like 16 ounces of water and then probably right to coffee. This is a way, and, and you feel, you feel an uplifting effect because it's warm. You put some salt in it. Um, but I have noticed my hunger levels have skyrocketed. So that could be a mix of both, like a, a less caffeine, which is a known appetite suppressant. But then also doing this first thing in the morning, it really does feel like my, almost when you're like 16 and you're ravenous all the time, it kind of had that effect on my system where I found myself being super hungry throughout the day. Um, which is good which, yeah, for athlete. Like, I think that's a great thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Maybe, maybe some, maybe some people listen. Well, go, well, no, I like want that. the opposite. Yeah. No, no, yeah. you want to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Um, well, no, that's, that's awesome, man. I, I, I definitely don't think I have the, the discipline to do no, no caffeine. But for those that are caffeine drinkers like me, that like you're just like, all right, that's never going to happen. You know, I think one thing that I've learned is like no caffeine after 2 p.m. Yep. under any circumstances, yep. right? If you at least do that, um, if, you, if you're one of those people that pops, you know, works out at 5 p.m., man, would not be popping that 250 milligram yep. caffeine pre-workout because that's going to mess with your sleep cycle. So at the very least... Give yourself a hard deck and a cutoff of, of consumption, but that's really cool. Uh, I might even try to start doing the bone broth thing. And I do agree with the effects of caffeine. I think it gives you that underlying anxiety a little bit. Yep. Um, and yeah, like if you're very analytical, maybe you do, you're do you overthinking things because you're just kind of bouncing around and you're amped exactly. up. So I, I totally see um, what you mean there. And um, it's like, you know, maybe you don't go cold turkey, but maybe you switch to that second cup's a decaf cup, you know yep. what I mean? And maybe your pre-workout you don't do the 300 milligram pre-workout, find one that's like 150 milligrams, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, you can, you can meet in the middle somewhere yep. if you're like, um, you know, you really still want to enjoy that, that nice beverage, but that's, that's cool. You've been able to do that. Yep. Man. And there's interesting what, what, what's cool. And cause by no means am I somebody like I'm never having it again in my life, but, um, what Michael Pollan, I think is his name, wrote a book on it. And he actually recommends then doing, I think four or five days on two days off. So like you drink your coffee, like don't, I think he says don't exceed 350 or something milligrams a, a day, but then take the weekend off, which uh, can be tough too. Cause that's, I think those are some of the most enjoyable when cups you of coffee. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> You're that just Saturday sitting on the morning. You actually have some time to, uh, yeah, to, to hang out, but that's an interesting model too is cause there, and, and, and he really, it's something to do with your central nervous system in, uh, not, not like getting in the habit of having it every single day. So there's an interesting angle too that people could explore is is doing four or five days on and then two or three days off. Yeah, and I've even heard if you do like a month off or six weeks off cold turkey, it will reset the receptors. Exactly. And then you don't need that 400 milligrams a day to get the same, you know, you can like that cup of coffee will actually now, fe you'll feel it, right? Yep. Um, yep. So that's another way to, to kind of recycle uh, or reset everything. Yep. Okay, cool. Um. All right, mine's a mine's a way simpler one um but starting off the morning maybe i'll just bundle these in because they're they're kind of similar but kind of in the morning routine realm yep uh morning journaling um so one of my friends pat got me this journal thing that it like basically it, it's real simple it's a one page per day and you write down three things you're grateful for um and then your your daily affirmation and then your top three kind of items for the day nice and it's just like you do it in the first five minutes you know it, and right when you wake up um, and I'm no, uh, psychologist, but the gratefulness thing is supposed to kind of wire your brain to kind of start the day in an optimistic mentality. And, and you know, you know, the, the hope is that that kind of carries forward. Yep. Um, and it really does make you kind of realize like you, you got it pretty good. You know what I mean? And, uh, usually the things that I'm grateful for are very simple things like my daughter and my family and yep. you know what I mean? You know, 
house to live in. You know what I mean? It's just simple stuff like that. By just simply writing it down, it makes you realize, okay, like I'm, I'm doing all right. You know what I mean? And, it, and so I, I really like that. It's such a simple task. And obviously my top three are usually on repeat quite a bit. I try to mix it up a little bit to make, you know what I mean? Um, and then, and then, you know, your, your daily affirmation is kind of cool. Um, you know, sometimes it's about business, this, you know, Hey, trust the process. You know, you yep. guys are on the right path. Sometimes it's more personal, you know, I try to bounce all over the place, but once again, it's kind of you, you being your own hype man. Um, sometimes it's religiously based, you know, yep. God having a plan and trust in the process there. Um, and then your top three, you know, that's a little bit more practical. Like, all right, let's look at my, my calendar today yep. and let's get in the frame of mind of what I need to execute today. Um, and, um, you know, this was actually one of my other ones, but I guess I'll rope it into it. But, you know, we have a tendency to, um, sometimes knock out the little stuff that, you know, for, especially for to-do list people, we lock, we knock out the little easy stuff that isn't as meaningful. And then you leave the big items on your list that are like the most daunting and they continue to, <laughs> they continue to stay on your list and they stress you out. Right. Yeah. So go after your top three and that, that relief that when you're done, um, you know, maybe you only got three items on your to-do list done that day, but that's better than nine little tiny ones. Um, and I remember I took this task management course and it was actually cool. They, they left us with these, like, uh, these little basically pieces of print collateral, like a notebook thing. And it had, um, three elephants on it as the little like bullet points. Mm -hmm. And then it had a bunch of little rabbits as the bullet points below that. And the, his, what he recommended was every day write down your three elephants and then all your little rabbits. But like you do know, you don't do any rabbits until the three elephants are crossed off. Like and he's like, and you have to be disciplined because the rabbits are so easy. You know what I mean? And, and it, it feels good crossing that off the, you know, that I, I take a Sharpie and I, I line through and it feels so good to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, so anyway, by, by doing the journaling, it frames up your mind of, okay, I need to stay focused. What, when I get to the office today, what are my top three? Um, and let's knock those out. So at least when I leave, you know, later that day, I feel like, okay, I, I got, I got the main kind of muscle movements done. Um, so yeah, I really, the, the one I want to go a little deeper on is, <clears throat> is the gratitude one, just because there, there is like a cliche or like stigma around that word where I think it's been overdone a little bit the last 10 years, but the practicality of what you just said, like truly having a practice to sink into gratitude is something that like, and, and I'll be honest, like I haven't been as consistent as I'd like to be on that exact thing. I do have a little one where as I'm going to sleep, I kind of do that in my head, like play over all the things I'm grateful for. But that one's wild, man, because it's so subtle. And that's like, here you could get into, and I'd love, there's people way smarter than us that could break it down in a more practical way. But the same situation, when, when you start to rewire your brain to have a, a grateful attitude towards things, it's wild the difference between that and then the, the flip side of that is, you get caught up in the hum of things. You have a lot of responsibility and you start to convince yourself that like how stressful things are, how, how crazy and hectic when you can step into the, 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 the opposite side, which is exactly what you're doing. The, the gratitude for the small things, you, it's like you have little markers throughout your day then that you can hang your hat on of like, it brings you back to reality. Do you know what I mean? Instead of getting caught up in that stressful state, even, even as simple as like you said, your daughter or having food, having food and water to drink. Every time you eat, then you're thinking like, damn, there's a lot of people that don't have this. And but it, like I said, that can sound a little cliche, um, but it really makes an effect. And you get to the end of the day and you realize like, damn, I'm not getting caught in my head like I used to. Yeah. And I, I like the fact that you have to write it down because it really forces you to like ink it. You know what I mean? Like yep. you could, a lot of people probably say, all right, I'm going to practice gratefulness the first thing in the morning while I meditate or whatever. And I think there's nothing wrong with that, but yep. like getting out a pen and going to that notebook and dating it yep. and then like, all right, well, you know what I mean? It like, it really makes it like, it's a real thing. You know That's, I mean? I've so, always been jealous yeah. of people. I have some friends I actually dated a girl in college. She had journals, a journal entry every single day from the age of 11 until, I mean, we were 23 or 24 like that. I, I, I wish, and I know I have a best friend who actually, is, I think he was 16 when he started, has journaled every single day. I, that, that type of, and they, it's yeah. not even a discipline for them. Like they actually enjoy doing it. And that's something I've always looked at and kind of been fascinated by. Cause there, there are extreme benefits when you're able yeah. to to kind of air your thoughts out and get uh kind of write them and dump them on a piece of paper well tan side tangent but as as since you're in the dad life as well i got i will challenge you with something and i'll actually yeah. buy it for you as a gift um i got an instagram ad served to me the other day it was like a month ago and it's a journal and it says letters to my little girl and then you can engrave their name on the, it's like a leather really cool journal yeah and it, it got me I was that's like, awesome done take my money and i then i got one for my buddy griff um because his daughter was turning three um but here's the plan 
here's here here was my challenge to them when I gave them yeah. the gift, and I'm going to do this, hold myself accountable to the same. But write one letter a month to your daughter, right? For from now until college, and then don't t- they don't know it exists. When they go to college, you go to drop them off, you do that last goodbye. You know, I'm hoping you know she goes to college. If she yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll still do it, right? <laughs> um, but I'm envisioning this. You know, I'm dropping her off at the university. I help her move all of her stuff into the room. Yeah. It's time to do the, the goodbye. I'm probably going to be a mess. Yeah. And then you out of your back pocket, you pull out this leather leather um, journal that has had a letter written to them every month, you know, for 18 years. Yep. Um, now she's about to be three, so I I, I got to do a catch up letter. So that's my that's my yeah, task. Yeah. But then once a month, doesn't anything crazy. Talk about the funny stuff she did. Talk about you know whatever it is. Yeah. Um. You know, it doesn't have to be a Shakespearean uh, novel, right? Yeah. Um. And then little by you know little by little, the years that fills up. Um. And then you give it to them. And then hopefully, you know, that can be a, you know, something that reaffirms them making good decisions, you know, in your absence um, and reaffirm like the love you have for them. Because I think is um, you don't really realize the love your parents had for you, I think, until you grow up a little bit. Like, I think for me in my, my 20s, I, I, I really, you know, became a little bit more mature and it yeah. all made sense. Before that, of course, you knew it, but it was a bit more like, oh, this is just how it is. And then you're like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, I think it'll be one of those things that hopefully she will cherish and hold on to, and then it'll all kind of come and it'll call, come full circle when she eventually has a kid, right? And then she's like, oh, I get it now. Yep. Because that's when you really get it, when you 100%. finally have a kid yourself. So I'll get you a journal. I like that, man. Um, and uh, I think it could be fun. Um, my, my buddy, he just wrote the first one. He texted me the other day, and he was like, dude, I was a mess. It makes, but, me, but, but dude, it it makes awesome. me emotional yeah. thinking about like, um, having that when they when And it's super 80. cool. Yeah, the Instagram man, man, it got me. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, but a really cool thing. Um, so I went off, off tan- tangent. And for anyone listening, I don't remember what it was. I would just Google like, um, you know, le- ger- let- letter to your little girl. And of course, there's a little boy. There's, you know, whatever. Yep. Um, so um, I'll, I'll snag one for you. I like that. Maybe we can hold each other accountable to that. Cool. My next one is... Uh, Super simple one that that I've integrated over the last probably two years, and and I, I'm I've been pretty good with it. I will admit, every once in a while, I'm in a rush and not able to do it. But is taking ten minutes uh, to meditate after working out. And I, I mean, we go to the same gym. I literally go into that little room off to the right and just lay on a mat on my back. I have a playlist on my on YouTube that I go to, and it's just binaural beats. Uh, and you can literally search like meditative binaural beats, and there's a ton of them on there. But what I've found is the ability to transition out of states quickly, um, and I'll define states here in a second, is super beneficial, not only like from working out to then entering a calmer state, but then even in my day at work, because I'm going to segue into something I do here too, where you go from working out high intensity, not always crazy intensity, but you're sweating, you're moving, your heart rate's up. If you're able to really quick kind of switch modes and drop into a calmer kind of meditative state, that then applies to to and here I'll give an example of what I do at work is if I'm feeling revved up, like say, say we have a meeting or you've been answering a ton of emails or you're working on a project that's taking a, a lot of, uh, kind of brain bandwidth, a six or a, a 20 minute walk doing six seconds, six seconds in breath, six seconds, uh, exhale, you will feel like a different person when you come in. So that's where I say like, even th- those, tra- those transitional states and there's where cold exposure is great too. If you go home from work, do a quick cold tub, like how you show up for your family then is completely different. So the 10 minutes after working out, I've just found is a great way to kind of work that muscle and practice doing that is to go from that high intensity, high heart rate to then kind of settling into a meditative state in five to 10 minutes, man, like you can work that into your workout. So yeah, that, that, that was one that, that is a really small, easy to integrate, but has paid off huge. And same thing we talked about with the gratitude, you start to become self-aware when you're kind of you're staying in a mental state for too long. And, that, and that's, that's the benefit, as I, as I mentioned before, to the cold and the sauna is those are great uh, kind of state changers where you do that for cold three minutes, sauna 20 minutes, you come out feeling like a different person. Yeah, that's great, man, because I'm usually the opposite. You know, I, 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 get, I cut it down to the minute when I leave the gym. You know what I mean? Because I'm on a different, so I got to drop right off at daycare. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? By the time I get over there. So I totally need to try to implement that because yeah. I come in, for our 10 a.m. meeting, I still got chalk on my hands and I'm still sweaty. I'm, a lot of times it's still out of breath because uh, I did like a Metcon. Your heart rate on yeah. here, you're I'm like pump, 110. I'm pumping like a 110 and I, 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 I finished my set 20 minutes ago. Um, you know what I mean? And I'm naturally kind of amped up as it is, as you know. Uh, so, 
you know, that can be a good thing. But obviously, then if something stressful comes across the table, maybe your reaction is a little bit more aggressive. Yep. Uh, because you're just you're you're kind of wound up. So I absolutely need to implement that. And honestly, that means being able to lay on your back and just listen to some Enya or something for yeah, like 10 minutes. It feels good. That's not a bad gig, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, no, I like that. And I, I think like too, that. we just, and, and I don't want to take us on a tangent on this, but with, with technology and like cell phones and, and I'm by no means, I think there's a, there's a huge positive effect that technology had, but there is similar to the caffeine that we talked about earlier. There's a hum that it creates. And that's why I like it, Even though I'm literally using a phone to play on YouTube, which is ironic, <laughs> I'm not looking at it. So yeah. at least it's just sound in my ears. Uh, but that, that's the, like using the example you just said, you get done working out, you, you'd taken caffeine before you come in here, there's stressful work, which for you and I, there always is something going on here. You're revved up then, then you go home with kids, you're revved up there. So having, and I bring up technology because that's a constant one too. In the evening, you pull out your phone, you watch some Netflix, you're never really like detaching and just focusing on kind of like going silent inside for a while. So a any little moment I can work in throughout my day to do that is, is super beneficial because it. It, it brings a, a more grounded kind of steady version to then when, when you need to take action in other realms. Yeah. Love it, dude. All right. Mine's another simple one. Um, you already kind of talked about this, but, but first thing in the morning, um, hydrate, um, plus your plus sunlight and supplements. Um, now, you know, I will caveat, you know, getting a balanced diet should always trump supplements, yep. but I, I do think there's tremendous value to supplements. If you can get the right guidance from the right people, um, and, you know, come up with a regimen that, you know, it's appropriate for what you need. You know, for me, that's, you know, I get blood every three months. It's like a 31 vial panel, the whole, you know, they check everything. Um, and then I have some people advising me on supplementation. Um, and I basically follow their lead because they're subject matter experts and they have, you know, degrees in this stuff. Yep. Um, but even the basics, fish oil, vitamin D, like, you know, even if you're just going to do a few, you know, take your supplements first thing in the morning. I put them in the organizers because I have morning and evening supplements. Um, so it makes it easier because if you have to open up eight, nine different pill bottles every morning, a lot of times you would end up not doing it because you're like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. Yep. So on every Sunday, I restock all my supplements for the following week. I also have these little Ziploc containers that has my pre-workout mix. So I'll do pre-workout, 10 grams of creatine, 5 grams of glutamine, a hydration packet, and a beet juice uh, packet. And I, and I make like five of them, right? Because first thing in the morning, it's one less thing I got to do. Yep. Um, and then I make my post-workout, which is a scoop and a half of whey and then the, a, a scoop of collagen and that goes in another little Ziploc container, you know, the little tiny yep. ones that screw shut. And then I'm, you know, I can throw that in my, my gym bag on the way out and then post-workout, I just dump it in. Right. Um, so supplementation, you know, the hydration is huge. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people will literally drink like two cups of coffee. They don't eat. And then it's noon and they're exhausted. And it's like, you've had no water. You've only had two cups of coffee. Like, what are you doing? Hydrate first thing. Um, you know, if you don't want to pay for the packets and all that, that's fine. Himalayan salt and lemon juice is a, or, you know, easy kind of, yeah. you know, quote, poor man's version of that. Um, yeah. And it tastes good. Um, so if you just want to buy a couple lemons every week and get some Himalayan salt, that's an easy way to replace that. Or, you know, there's plenty of companies. I, I, I like the LMNT packets. They taste pretty good and there's yeah. a lot of salt in there. So first thing in the morning, you wake up. You do your, your, your hydration packet, you drink, you know, I do a giant mason uh, glass. It's like 32 ounces. I take my supplements with it. And then I try to walk out on the deck just for like five minutes and just like stand there. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, while the coffee's brewing. And I, I try to like let that hydration hit before I take my first cup. Um, so those would be my uh, kind of morning routine, kind of disciplined. Um, and and what, are your, yeah. what are your staples as far as, because I think you and I have alignment here, yeah. but like what are your staples as far as supplements that if you're not, of course, you're always adding in, taking things out, but what are the ones you, you take and also would recommend kind of just, I, I think the basics is like the, the fish oil and the vitamin D, especially in the winter, like yep. the, the benefits of like, and vitamin D is so cheap. I do the 10,000 I use. It's like for 60 of them, like, I don't know, nine bucks. Yep. Um, but fish oil, um, I do the, the, like the, the thorn multivitamin, um, you do the elite one. The yeah. AM, the, PM. Yeah, exactly. That's the AM, PM that covers a lot. Um, I have some kind of, um, cortisol management ones and yep. adrenal gland ones um that uh have gotten my cortisol levels way down those were again i have no idea the science behind it i just know these people are way smarter than me um yep. and you know, based on the blood work and it did help in my last blood draw my cortisol levels were way down which was good um you know creatine monohydrate glutamine um of course protein w with the workout um try to see what else those are the, the kind of the main ones. That's exactly. Um, there's some more complex ones, like there's like DIM, Detox, and 
um dhea yeah you D- yeah i take yeah. dhea i think i take 50 what is it milligrams daily well, yeah it's usually 10 25 or 50 yeah i take a 50 yeah. for that um but uh yeah it's a good little stack uh and then i'll take beta alanine pills if if, it, if yep. it's a hard workout day just for kind of that lactic acid mitigation and um yeah so you know i'm, I'm definitely a supplement guy i'm yeah. I'm, I'm that dork that like on a trip <laughs> breaks out all the supplement, you know what I mean? And has yeah. it all planned out and little Ziploc baggies in my bag and all that. But I, you know, I just got back from Arizona for five days and, you know, staying on that routine is important. Right. So, um, yeah, that, that's a one way to do it. So but yeah, do you, do dial you, in the morning. In the mor- this is personal curiosity. Do you eat anything before? Yeah. A big breakfast. Okay. You eat a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'm on the, the catalyst nutrition with, with Cheryl. So yeah, she, it's a big breakfast nice. and I'm actually, um, one thing I didn't realize is like the amount of carbs I was missing out on. Like she has me like, I'll eat like a giant bowl of blueberries. Like, yeah. you know, like the big blueberry packets at the store. Yeah. Like that's like one serving in the morning for me yeah. with like a thing of oatmeal and then like eggs and like sometimes bacon or sausage and like yeah. guacamole. Like that's my breakfast. It's just pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going into the gym and I'm ready to rock, dude. The <laughs> calories have, have been consumed. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, I'm not one of those skip breakfast people. I know there's, there's something to that if, if you do it a certain way. Yeah. But I'm, I you can't. know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big F350, man. I got, I got to be pumping the calories or I'll feel like crap in yeah. the, uh, you know, in the gym. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And, and I agree on the supplement. I, vitamin D, fish oil, and then for guys, Creatine, honestly, at this point, too, anyone should be taking yeah. that. So it's not obviously not even a. It used to be looked at as a very like male, like macho bodybuilder thing, but that there's there's probably no there might not be any supplement that's more researched than creatine at this point. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next one for me, and it, and it kind of relates to what you said about the the gratitude thing is I do. Um. And it, and this is probably this is less of a daily, maybe week. I would say a weekly thing is clear map, mapping of dream. And when I say that, I don't mean like your dream at sleep. It's more kind of what is going well, what is going bad? And what is the what is kind of the what are the large things both from a life and then from a professional standpoint that you're working towards. And and I guess this is kind of a form of journaling is is kind of rating kind of where you're at on on a spectrum of, of kind of performance working towards that. And then also kind of what are the what are the hindrances or kind of things or barriers you're running into and trying to achieve that. And what I've found with that is that it, that, that once again is a good way to take a step back from the hum of your, your day to day. Meaning like we all, I think as humans have these aspirations, um, some big, some small and some achievable in a short time frame, and then some achievable over a long time frame. And I think holding yourself responsible to, to, to writing those down and, and seeing how you're progressing is, is super important because I think that's the beautiful thing about humans is the ability to pull things that are in the unknown into reality with enough discipline, kind of hard work, and then intention. Because if, if you don't have a map to get there, you can work your ass off all day, but you might be going in the wrong direction. So yeah, that, that's one, as I said, less of a daily, but more of just a, a, a very intentional mapping of both on the family side and then the professional side of kind of how, how I and we are progressing towards kind of the, the, I call it the dream that we're trying to bring forth. Yeah. And I mean, you're probably sick of hearing me use this term, but it's, it's kind of a jujitsu slash like land warfare reference for you know my my old job. But improving your fighting position, yeah. like you should constantly be seeking to improve your fighting position. Um, and if you're not doing something that's that's that is doing that, like it, in a way the opposite, you're you're just stagnant, right? So, yep. um, you know, being aware of those things that you're you know the, the the family side, the career side, you know, your personal development with you know hobbies and interests, whatever it is. Um, it sounds like what you're getting at is, is kind of doing a kind of a systems check on each one of those yep. to make sure you're, you're almost grading yourself. And I thought Patrick Vellner had a kind of a cool analogy. I'll probably butcher it when on, on the podcast with him, but like there's three balloons, right? And you can only fit, you know, they, they, they have to fit into a box. Yep. So they can't all three be inflated at once fully to get in the box. Yep. You might have to deflate family a little bit if career has to blow up a little bit more for that week and then you got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought that was a great analogy. You know, of course, when he's competing, that competition balloon is like, you know, when, right before the CrossFit games, it's pretty much full and Hey, the family balloon and the other balloon is a little bit smaller, yeah. but hey, as soon as the CrossFit games ends, he's going to deflate that and inflate the other one. So I thought that was kind of a cool way to, to put it in perspective yeah. um, because it's not always going to be perfectly in balance. Right. And, and, and as, I think as long as you're, um, aware of that and you're in like you said you're intentional um 
you know, that's kind of the first step. Yep. And you're still, you're never going to get it perfect, but, well, it, but, but merely by just merely thinking about it, you're going to, you're going to do a lot better than most. And the goal should be, I think, cause I, I love that example that Patrick gave as well is see if you're leveraging too far into one of those systems for too long. So like some of mine are like, I like in, in this Paul check, who is somebody I, I've always looked up to, he calls them like the, the doctors, but like doctor movement, doctor diet, doctor family, doctor quiet, meaning nice. like, like any, that. any of those, if you're, if you are too, you should have moments where you're over leveraged into one of those. Like that's mm-hmm. a very normal thing. But if you see over time that you're continually over leveraged in one and under leveraged in the other, you're going to be out of balance. Yeah. And, and I, like one for me, I've been thinking a ton about is fun. Like I've, and, and now once again, it's kind of the flow of life. I have two under two are, we're working our asses off here, just a lot going on. But I realized like I'm taking no time to have fun. Yeah. And, and you know, when it clicked for me was when Max and I were playing pickleball. And we played for like an hour and 15 minutes. And after that, I was like, holy shit, I haven't had this feeling in a long time. Like even, cause working out, it, it, it does it, like gives you that same feeling, but we weren't, this was so loose. Like we were bullshit and we're talking shit as we're playing, like just a very loose thing. And I realized like, oh my God, like this is what sports used to do growing up is like you had practice after school, you're there for two hours. Of course, some are harder than others, but it was like such a, such a healthy kind of reset of every day. So something like that, and that, that relates obviously to Dr. Mo- or like the movement side as well, but kind of carving out and for each person, these could look different. Like what are those pillars that, that make you a happy, healthy, like grounded person? And then making sure you kind of, you kind of rate those, um, on a, on a week to week, month to month, or even a day to day basis to see like which system you're over leveraging into. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, I think so many compar- parents can relate to that. Um, you get a month, you go through a month, you're like, what the fuck just happened? I know. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's so, it's such a dra- dramatic change, particularly in the first, I would imagine this will get more normalized as our kids get older, but like, you know, it wasn't that many, it wasn't that long ago. Our lives were completely different. <laughs> like it wasn't that long ago. Like you and I were playing beach volleyball all <laughs> day long hours, yeah. and drinking eight beers yeah. and just play, like literally playing all day yeah. with no plan. Right. And it was awesome. And like, that was it. You had no obligations to anyone. <laughs> um, and now like that world seems so far away. <laughs> Uh, where like if, if, if I like drop my daughter off at my, at my parents' house and I get like a four hour window, I'm like, this is wild. (laughs) I have four hours in an entire week just to myself. This is insane. I know. What am I going to do? Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? It's, and I know so many parents can relate to that. And if, you know, if you're a parent that doesn't get that, do something to give you at least a little bit of, because for me, that feels like an eternity and it's, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm good. I got to recharge a little bit, but. Um, you know, I think maybe a couple times a year you have a more extended one, or maybe you take a long weekend or something yeah. like that. Um, so and, I, I think that's critical, man. You, you, you got to do that. And you have to have some like grace. And, and we've talked about this before, some grace too, because I remember when, after our first was born, um, and my fiance is the same way too, is you try to go back to the old version of you. Let's use working out as an example. Like you, you finally have that hour to work out and then you end up just more discouraged because you realize, holy shit, I'm completely out of shape right now i'm not strong anymore <laughs> yeah. so then it can actually snowball and, and diets like that too man you you like you eat one shitty meal or or you kind of break the the momentum you had and you kind of get you, you end up like berating yourself and being hard on yourself which just leads to more of the shitty behavior and that can be definitely i, I know i went through that having the kids is you you get back into work and now i lost like 12 pounds my strength was out the window and I would like stop, I'd be like, fuck it then. I'll, I'll take another week off. And that's why I say the grace has to come in. Like do what you can and, and build, stack those days on top of each other. Because if not, then you really, th- those months really start sneaking up on you when you're not carving out that time for yourself. Yeah. And I think you have to throw away the old, the old way of thinking. Like it's, sure. it's just never going to be what it was. Right? Yeah. And the quicker you can just accept that. Um, and there's obviously so many new benefits in, in, in the new, di- new dynamic. There's so many awesome things. So yes, did you discard that ability to go work out for two hours and go play beach volleyball all day <laughs> and then go out until 1 a.m. and then sleep until 10 a.m.? Like, yes, yeah. you threw that away. But I would say what has replaced it is a whole lot more meaningful. Uh, and we're more than happy to concede that. But yes, um, you know, the, the, the workout thing is a great example because especially if you were like a you know, high-level athlete and then all of a sudden like you can barely get in 45 minutes a day and your, your strength's going down and you're getting out of breath and shit that you would have just yeah. dominated uh you know yeah it takes a little bit of a a reframing of yeah. what does success look like now in 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 that you know arena so 
uh, grace is definitely required, I think. All right, is it, is it me or you? Your turn. Okay. Um, all right. Um, this, is a, just a, this is super easy and straightforward, but eating often throughout the day and, and, and kind of with that dialing in your nutrition, um, you know, I, I've kind of, mine's dialed because I'm paying someone to dial it, but so I know not, not everyone will, will take that approach, but what I see, and this is, I think, particularly true with girls, the ladies listen to me here, they, they think, you know, oh, I'm going to eat less because it'll like make me like lose weight. And it's like, you're, you're doing a little the opposite of what you should be doing because metabolism is, is rooted in our evolutionary biology, right? So way back in the day when, when food was not guaranteed, as the time between meals increased, the body out of a survival instinct would tone down metabolism and say, okay, we need to go on low battery mode, right? We're going to burn less calories because we don't know when this next meal is coming, right? Um, whereas if you were eating, you know, multiple times throughout the day, um, your body would be like, oh, we, we must have a, you know, a, a strong supply of, of food available. So, hey, we can run on full power because I think we're, we're good to get that, that meal soon. So, you know what I mean? So your, your energy levels are optimized and your metabolism is optimized. The same thing not still exists in 2020, 2024. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, cut me some slack. I do that all yeah, the time. Yeah, 2024. Um, so, you know, you have these people that, like, again, particularly with the ladies, it's like, all right, what have you had to, to eat today? Oh, I had, um, you know, I had a few celery sticks at lunch and two cups of coffee and it's dinner now. And you're like, okay, you, your metabolism right now is zero. You know what I mean? Um, so, so making sure you're eating throughout the day and um, flip that thing on its head because, you know, if, if you're getting eight miles per gallon versus getting 40 miles per gallon, those are wildly different scenarios, right? And that's essentially what it is with our metabolism. Yep. Um, you want to be the person that's, that's, that's um, honestly getting eight miles per gallon, right? You want to be using those calories and running. Um, you know, the, your, your, our food supply is, is now infinite essentially. So we don't have to worry about like, oh, we need to prolong. We want, we don't need to go on low power mode. Think of it as your, your iPhone is constantly plugged in. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't need to go on low power. So run it, um, and, and plan that, that you need to plan that out throughout your day, particularly if you're a busy professional or a busy parent and you're, you know, maybe you're, you're taking care of the kids full time, uh, plan out the day. So you're eating, um, and it doesn't get to 4 PM and you go, holy shit, I haven't eaten since breakfast. Um, because that gap, you know, the, your metabolism will, will start to to go down, and then you're burning less calories, and then start putting on, you know, body fat and all this. So eat often, have a plan. Um, I, you know, I recommend getting with a professional at least to to, to you know maybe do some consulting for you in the very beginning if you're not um, if you haven't lived in this world of you know athletics and human performance, um, and kind of learn about the different macros and micronutrients and all that, and put together a plan, and then ideally you meal prep. On, on Sundays, and then you're, you know, you have it all kind of packaged up in the fridge, ready to go. Um, but that's so huge, man. I mean, what you consume is drives so much of your energy systems and you're everything. Just, and it's everything. So, um, this one's for the ladies. I know there's some fellas here that are guilty of this, but for you ladies, eat more, not less, and you will get more lean. You will have more energy. Um, and, and that, that's what I learned with Cheryl because I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an eater, man. I'm <laughs> like, the food bill for my parents growing up with me and two other brothers was, had to be insane. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then, so when we did the DEXA scan and she, and she, and I logged my, my meals for two weeks and then she looked at it, she was like, Hey, you basically, I learned I was way short on calories and I thought I was eating a lot. And now it's like, I gotta, eat, I got it's an effort to eat everything she gives me in a day. Yep. Um, but I realize now energy levels are way up. I, I've gotten stronger. I've gotten leaner. My body, you know, uh, fat percentage has gone down and I, I think I added like 1500 calories to my diet. Right. So in, in theory, you'd be like, Oh, you should have gotten fatter. And you know what I mean? Yep. It's like, no, the opposite has happened. And now in the gym, I'm recovering so much better because I'm giving my body what it needs to function at a, at, you know, at a high performing level. Well, um, and and so. there, there's that like, try to eat as much, try to overeat whole foods. And you know, I'm a bit of a dork with this is that like, eating real food is, is kind of a, a huge, I think, variable of what you're saying is because if you're eating processed shit with a ton of salt and sugar, you can overeat. Like in those cases, you can eat stuff that's so calorie dense with so, <laughs> so, such a lack of micronutrients that your body is like starving, although it's getting a ton of calories, it's not getting a lot of the micronutrients it needs to survive. So that's where I, and, I, and I've had people do this because it, it, you will, it's eye-opening to try to do it where you o try to overeat whole foods. And I just, what I mean by that is obviously like meats, vegetables, fruits, 
um, grains, nuts, depending on, on what you're trying to do, you realize like, holy shit, you get satiated very quick when you're eating those foods. And, and as you said, like, if nothing else, focus on the protein aspect, like that one's huge. If you can, because a lot of people realize like they think they're eating a lot and then they, they do their macros and I'm by no means somebody who like tracks my macros down to a T, but they realize they're eating 52 grams of protein in a day. And it's like <laughs> taking that, even if you just go from, say you're a 160 pound guy, going from 52 to a hundred and, and eventually I think working towards a gram per body weight is, is a healthy spot to be, especially if you're working out a lot. But even going from 50 to 100 to 120, you're going to notice a huge difference in the way you function throughout the day. Just like your overall energy, even, even the desire to work out, which then you start to relate to hormones, your sleep. When you're, when you're in that starvation mode or you're under eating and then you're putting caffeine and then life stress on top of it, it's, a, it's an unhealthy mix, man. And it, it, will, it will burn your system out from the inside. That's like the, the burnt toast analogy is you will start to dry yourself out because you're just not giving your, your body the fuel it needs. Yeah, and I'll add this, um, especially again for the ladies. I hear a lot of, I don't want to get bulky and this and that. And it's like, all right, the more muscle you have, the, the higher your metabolism is, right? So, so again, if you have no muscle and you're you know, skinny and this and that, you're getting 60 miles per gallon. You're the Prius, right? That means that you are not burning a lot of calories. So when you eat stuff, you know what I mean? It's... You're not you're not burning as much. Whereas you want to be the the freaking F three fifty dually diesel getting nine miles per gallon high. You know what I mean? Because by packing on that muscle, um, your metabol your metabolic rate goes up. So for for you know obviously this is true for the guys, but I, I see this like, oh, I don't want to put on muscle. I just want to go on the elliptical for forty five minutes. And again, any form of fitness, I encourage. If that's if that's all you can do, do it. Um, but there's this, this fear of, I'm going to put on too much muscle and you should be embracing building muscle because it it will make you look leaner. Who cares what the scale says? Throw the scale away, literally throw it out. You'll, you'll go by what, how you feel and how you look. Um, but then guess what? When you have that cheat meal, get a little more muscle on your body, your muscles are going to burn it off, right? So you and I can eat a freaking bacon cheeseburger and a bunch of wings and drink five beers. And and if we you know do that a couple of times, it's, it's not noticeable. Because we, we're, we're, our metabolism is ripping and we've built, you know, a lot of muscle on our body. So, but if you're the person that's anti-muscle, it's like, okay, now your margin of error is way less because when you eat that, you know what I mean? And <laughs> you're going to see it. Right. Um, so embrace muscle. That is what will burn energy, which is what we want. We have basically an infinite source of energy. Now, if this was, you know, if we were in the apocalypse and food was scarce, we would completely flip this on its head. But food is not scarce. Um, and, uh, so, so I think just people need to embrace that, that muscle is good. Eating lots of food is good. You will feel better. You, your, your body composition will improve and you'll have more energy. And I think the only, and it's not pushback, just caveat to what we're saying is I have seen cases and I've explored this in myself where if you're, mu- or, and we should bring somebody on to talk specifically about this it, because there's more and more information coming out. If your microbiome is messed up, say you've been eating or just drinking a lot of alcohol or just super stressed, it doesn't even have to be an external food. There, there may be a time to reset. And, and what I mean by that is putting more food into a system that's not functioning properly can actually be a, a, like you're, you're not digesting your food correctly. So, and I, we, we have some people here and I wish I, I wish I could plug them as far as the local spot that does this, but they'll, and it's an imperfect system and they'll admit that, but they'll test your microbiome. And there should be at least within a range of balance of these different, um, kind of con or, or, or pillars of what's in your microbiome. And if they see that those are super out of whack, it, you, you may have to do, there, there's different ways to approach it. I've done like three day fast water fast. And in that, what that does is just, it completely resets mm-hmm. your system. Or you can go on like an elimination diet where you eat very specific foods for kind of a period of time. Once again, to, to kind of reset the inflammatory markers, as well as just the makeup of your microbiome. So that was the only caveat I thought is that, because it's very prevalent now, a lot of people are having stomach issues and there's different theories to that, whether it's kind of the seed oils, gluten, the, 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 the more processed gluten, but we should have a professional to talk deeply about that. But if you are somebody who find yourself bloated or super gassy, or if you're having really low energy and even depression throughout the day, you will be amazed when you do a three day fast. It's a great sign to see like, or some of the, is this anxiety, depression, these feelings I'm having, you do a three day fast and in day two, all of a sudden those feelings are gone. It's a great indicator that there's something going on with your gut. And it's definitely worth exploring because that's, they're realizing now like the gut brain connection, like 
Oh, yeah. uh, your 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 serotonin and your um, dopamine is so related to the functionality of your of your gut. So definitely definitely worth exploring. Yeah, we should. That would be a fun one. Yeah, I, I would try that. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, I, I know there's a lot of emerging like literature on that. And, yeah. Yeah. We should let's try to get someone in here that can that can go deep on that. Yep. Okay. So segueing bear then off of the the eating thing is actually one, and it counters what we're saying a little bit, but avoiding super super large meals just two hours before you go to sleep. And I think for most of us, I think. M- in general, people are eating at six or seven, which is perfect. But if if you are somebody that kind of pushes that or eats a bunch of snacks late um, late at night, I have found, and this is when I was wearing my aura ring a lot, that's going to affect your sleep. So think about your like sleep as a way to clean things up. Your body's releasing HGH. It's it's even as we just talked about your 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 gut and everything is kind of resetting its systems. And if you flood that with a bunch of foods, especially processed foods, right before you go to sleep. It has to focus on digesting before it can move into kind of the the resetting stages. So that is my last or, or kind of a quick hitter at the end, as well as um, and this is my dorky one that all my friends make fun of me for. But once again, I see an effect of it is wearing good, high quality blue light blocking glasses at night. Um, nice. Just try to do it for two hours before, and I use one called Raw R A Optics. They're a little more pricey and they're dorky in the sense that they're like orange tinted, but it made a huge, I used to just buy like the you rock in the old blue um, blockers. Yeah. Remember I, the blue blockers? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what they looked like. They, they came back under a, a false yeah, or a, a yeah. new name. Yep. Yeah. So I, I used to just order the $10, $15 ones from Amazon, which I'm not, well, I'm not an expert on this. So were those working? Maybe, but these ones, I noticed you, you notice a difference when you wear them. So yeah, that's just another quick one that, cause, cause I, what I, time do you, like throw on the blue block. So they say they say at sunset. So right now that would be like seven or six forty five. I do it at eight usually because okay. I usually go to bed around ten. Okay. So I, yeah, I yeah. do eight to ten because right. and, and I vary. Sometimes I I only read in the evenings lately. Like my uh my fiance and I we, we had a show we were watching. So like in that case that's where it's important. Like yeah. if you're just reading and stuff, um a little less applicable. It's from the screen. Exa- yeah, exactly. Exactly. So but even but even phones. in jet these okay. ones are weird because they do they say they have benefits even if you're not looking at screens. Okay. Just the tint um, right on. That, that they're using. So yeah, I, I I don't have all the details on that, but I have noticed um, that they do make a difference. Well, just to, you know, on your on your eating one, tr- you know, try to eat dinner early, yeah. right? Because I, dude, if I don't eat early, I come home and I eat a outrageous amount of chips and salsa. <laughs> like that's you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, I'm realizing like. Because I'm always hungry when I go, dude, like, dude, just eat dinner at four, five forty-five. Yeah, put through, you know, heat it up and, and roll. But you know, Cheryl, I hope you're not listening. But there's been time. I mean, I will. I I am a monster when it comes to chips and salsa. And then, yeah, you're right. Because then I'm not hungry, and then I end up eating at eight thirty. Yep. Right. So, um, just be disciplined on your schedule. Um, I know a lot of families eat crazy late, and I'm like, what are, what are y'all doing? Um, so yeah, that's a great one, man. For all the reasons you discussed. Um. Okay, I, I got just a couple. I know we're trying to close this out here, but I mean, they're so obvious and I won't even go deep on it, but going to bed early. Like if, if there's anything we're talking about that is like the, the, the most high ROI action item, go to freaking bed. That's it, man. Um, there's so much science on the difference between getting five and a half hours versus eight. And what, you know, basically that is, that sets you up for the entire next day of, and, and it, it basically affects everything that next day and beyond, right? If you, you know, over the long period of time that can lead to chronic things. And, um, so, so, you know, I know a lot of us like to, you know, we need to decompress and we want to watch the Netflix and whatever else it is, um, especially after a long day, but, but, you know, watching 90 minutes of Netflix and getting six and a half hours of sleep versus no Netflix and going to bed and getting eight hours, the, the ROI on that 90 minutes of going to bed is literally like a 50 X on, on the, instant gratification you got out of watching some mindless show of what's that new dating show uh blind uh love is blind love that's the one all the girls were one. talking about that, that yeah it's it's so dumb like you got <laughs> nothing out of that your your life you did not improve your fighting position <laughs> position now going to bed guess what you improve your fighting position because you're going to get up the next morning you'll be ready to crush your workout you're going to go into the office be ready to rock and roll you know you're gonna have fresh ideas you're gonna be bringing the energy you're gonna you know what i mean if something stressful hits you you're more um, set up to take that on. Whereas if you're compromised and you got five hours, you know what I mean? You're, you're a little more, you know, irritable, you're aggravated, stress will get to you more. Yep. I mean, it's this compound effect. So go to bed early. And, and right before that, something I've been trying to do is just do something that allows you to decompress before going to bed. And I try not to make it related to an electronic device. Try not to make it like, all right, I'm going to scroll Instagram. Again, that's 
it is addicting and you know you can get caught up in that but try to do something that's a little bit more old school so for me i'm, I'm trying to learn guitar right now right so that's oh, yeah. my like 45 minutes i'm just practicing chords i've been working on on wagon wheel nice. right even though I'm, it's terrible but yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i'm like i need it's my okay now i have uh you know a challenge right yeah. so it it, it 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 occupies me i've heard woodworking now that maybe that's not an evening activity but things that like kind of really focus you in on something uh, I do whittling, which I've been terrible at. What is at. whittling? Just like a, I have a piece of wood with a knife, and you're just oh, you you're car yeah. you're carving something. It's old um, school, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's not. So do something to decompress, um, and then you know get to bed early um, and try to get eight eight hours or more. Um, and I know again, some people are like, oh, that's not realistic. I, I'm going to get six, but just know that that you are you are running at eighty percent if you do that. Um, and sometimes you have to. Yeah, you know, like this Arizona trip, we were getting, we were getting up at three fifteen to go, um, jump out of planes and the shit. Bruno, effect. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were, yeah, and up till midnight prepping gear. So, uh, it's not always going to be the case, um, but uh, you know, outside of those those outliers, um, if you can be consistent to that, um, you're going to be so much more set up for accomplishing everything and you know having more energy and being in a better mood and all the things that come with it. Um, so, well, I mean, I'll just, I guess, I'll close with cold tub sauna. I know it's become like, oh, this recent fad, but it it really isn't. Um, and there's a reason so many people are doing it. So, you know, I think for, for those that can potentially, you know, can afford it, you know, getting a setup at your house, I think is awesome. Um, I know there's a lot of businesses now in town that you can get like, you know, monthly memberships and it's like unlimited. I think that's a great option too. I don't think it's crazy expensive. Um, I think there's one off a of shore drive. I can't remember the name of it. Um, I haven't but, been to that one. but, uh, but Hey, these are great things. And, and maybe you, it, it's your weekend thing. Maybe you can't go during the, during the week, but it absolutely is a good reset. Um, you know, the, the rule of thumb that I was told that is if you want to feel rejuvenated and with cold, you know, if you're doing both yep. and if you want to see, feel relaxed and with hot. So if, you know, if I was doing the protocol at night, I would always end with the sauna. Um, and if I'm doing it in the morning, I'll hit like a 30 or 40 minute sauna right into the tub. And then I like, you naturally rewarm, right? Yep. Even though it kind of, kind of sucks. Um, but that, but that will create the, the effect you want. Um, and for those skeptical, um, you know, recommend just try it at some point. Um, I think you, you definitely, particularly the cold, you will feel kind of the, the dopamine effect that, that is prolonged over four or five hours and, and, it, and it will make you feel more energetic. Your outlook is more optimistic. Um, it's just, honestly, it's like a, it's like a freaking superpower. It's and wild. It, and it, it's not, it's not placebo. I, I don't, I refuse to believe anyone who tries to say that it is a hundred percent not because I can sniff out a like placebo like all day long and it's, it's real. Uh, and then, and then the same thing with the sauna, how, how relaxed you feel. I got, I got a, a, a full spectrum UV one, um, that also has red light. So most, um, UV saunas use like the long form mm -hmm. UV wavelength, but now they're starting to come out ones that have long, medium and short form and red light, um, which is pretty awesome. So my recommendation, if you're going to get a UV one, find the full spectrum ones that also have red light, um, because that you know, the, the, it, they, the, the wavelength will penetrate different layers of your tissue with the short form being the, the, uh, the skin and then yep. the red light as well. It's like supposed to be really good for your skin and like, you know, all that stuff, which um, is becoming more and more popular, particularly with the ladies. Um, if, if you're skeptical, <clears throat> next time you're in a really shitty mood, if you have access to a cold, or a, cold, or a cold tub or a sauna or even just cold water, do that and then see how your mood changes yeah. and then still be skeptical. Exactly. Because it is... I, I know that's like the, if, if my fiance and I are in a little riff or we're fighting, I'll be like, let me just go sit in the cold for three minutes. Cause we have water right outside. Nice. So it's, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's a bay, but yeah. I get in there, man. And it's like, you're, you're laughing at what you were arguing about. Yep. So yeah, even if it is placebo, I'll take all of it. All right. Well, I think we, we, we that was a good little list. Uh, you know, by, by no means we are not experts and I'm sure our list will continue to evolve over time as we, you know, hear about more stuff on podcasts and you know, the, the game changes a little bit. So, all right, so let's just summarize the list super quick. So yep. you just uh, speed round, bullet point your list, and then I'll bullet point mine, and then we'll close her out. Yep. Uh, be aware of, ca I'll, I'll summarize, be aware of caffeine intake, uh, and I'm doing bone broth, homemade bone broth in the morning, which has just a ton of benefits. Um, the other one we talked about, I, put, I did put sunlight in the morning too, but you touched on that one. Uh, meditation after working out, just do five or 10 minutes. Use that as a way to real or like be, be able to change states, whether you're at work and it's a walk or as in that example, obviously doing just a quick meditation after working out. I had sauna and cold showers here. You talked about that. Um, be careful eating big meals before sleep. Uh, 
dream and goal mapping. Um, and that can be a daily, weekly or monthly practice, but get really clear on what you're working uh, towards on a family aspect or a professional aspect, and then hold yourself and uh, those involved accountable. Um, uh, blue light blocking glasses we talked about and then supplementation. And we touched on that too. Just the big ones for me, fish oil, uh, fish oil, vitamin D, a multivitamin creatine. And then I, I do take DHEA as well, but that's kind of a, that's a more niche one. Um, if you're looking for specific results, solid list. All right. Mine, uh, morning journaling, uh, hydrating first thing in the morning, along with sunlight in your supplement stack. Uh, eating often throughout the day and dialing in that nutrition. We talked about the benefits of about how eating often affects your metabolism, which has so many benefits, uh, particularly if you're trying to, trying to lean out and, and have a good uh, you know, body composition. Talk about going to bed early, the obvious benefits of that. Uh, working out the active lifestyle, that's kind of implied, but it's critical. Cold tub sauna as, as an option um, that you can, you can implement. Um, accomplishing your big tasks vice the little ones in your day. And that kind of goes back to the journaling. Uh, frame up your day with your big three, the, the elephants, and then knock out the rabbits after that. Um, decompressing at night, finding an activity that's hopefully not always Netflix or scrolling Instagram uh, that allows you to decompress and just kind of you know, remove yourself from the, the hustle and bustle of your normal life. Um, no ca- caffeine after 2 p.m., kind of along with Tony's point. If you're one like me, there's no chance I'm ever going to not do caffeine. <laughs> um, I'm just realistic with that. But I, I am good at cutting it off before 2 p.m. And if you're a 5 p.m. workout guy, maybe take your pre-workout at two. You know what I mean? You're still going to be feeling those benefits. Um, so, you know, that's what I would recommend. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my list, man. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, hope, hope you got something out of that. Um, if there are other things that you guys do, we would love if you could, uh, you know, let us know, shoot us a DM, um, you know, on Instagram uh, or message us. And, you know, uh, also, if you guys can, if you're not already subscribed, uh, regardless on the platform, whether it's YouTube, Apple, or Spotify, please subscribe and, and, and rate us. So that that will, will really help us. Um, that's a big part of the podcast game. So if you feel like you did get something of value out of this, that would be the one, uh, one ask that we have from you to help us. Um, we will continue to bring on, you know, hopefully, you know, for some of these topics, some subject matter experts, you know, we have someone uh, that's an expert in psychedelics we're going to be bringing on. Um, I think the, 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 the microbiome gut thing would be great, yep. Tony. Um, the, the nutrition one, I know we're going to do. Um, so if you guys have, have requests, uh, we want to learn with you. Um, so, so, you know, shoot us a DM, let us know. We have the born printed podcast and Instagram. We also have the regular BP one. Of course we answer both of those. Um, so, um, hit us anywhere you can. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all learning together. This is, this is a, there's no final end state. You know, we are, we're always learning and, and we just want to you know try to give you guys little little things for your toolbox to get a little bit better as as we are as well. So thanks for tuning in everybody and we will see you next week. Thanks guys.